Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Don Marsh. One of Broadway's most popular shows returns to St. Louis tonight for a short run at the Fox Theater. It's Beautiful, the Carol King musical. It is, of course, the story of singer-songwriter Carol King's early years. There's a strong St. Louis connection to this award-winning musical. The lead producer is Paul Blake. He's the former executive producer of the Municipal Opera, and he credits the Muni experience with helping him stage Beautiful. But the star of the show is King's music. It dominated the 60s and 70s and beyond as she wrote and performed hit after hit. She was, as I remarked to producer Blake during a recent telephone interview, the soundtrack to a generation. It's extraordinary. Um, and it gets the people's love for it and affection for it. For it and for Carol, it just keeps growing. I don't see it getting any less. We've been on Broadway now for five years. We celebrated our fifth anniversary back in January. And um, Carol came to that performance. And, um, and we told no one she was going to be there. But there's a, there's a spot in the show, at the end of the show, where the character, who's Carol King, becomes Carol King. And they say, and she's going to enter the stage at Carnegie Hall, and they say, ladies and gentlemen, the Grammy winner, the all-time great, the, the, the more, more songs, the, the list is amazing, Miss Carol King. And then the character walks out and walks to the piano and sings the final song of the show. So we called Carol, and we said, wouldn't it be great if for the fifth anniversary performance, when they said, Miss Carol King, you walked out. Oh, she said, I love that. Well, you never know with Carol. You know, sometimes she goes, no, um, I won't do that. But she loved it. So we told no one she was going to be there. Um, matter of fact, the cast that night before the show, at half hour, we told them Carol was going to be in the show that night. And because we didn't want anyone to know, because it was going to be filmed for CBS morning um, television for the next day for a show they do on CBS Morning about, I guess, theater. Um, and Carol walked out, and the place went just crazy. Um, you know, she sat at the piano, and they went crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> she took a curtain call. They went nuts. It was, it was, it was, she had a great time. We, we, we were very happy about that. One of the interesting things about that story is the fact that early on, as I understand it, Carol King really didn't want to be involved in this production when you were getting things rolling. Oh, it was, yeah. Well, you know, people had tried to do a Carol King show for many years. And, matter of fact, I was the third shot. Um, two other people had tried it, and twice, as it, as it started getting developed, Carol said, no, just stop it. I'm, you, you, I don't, you're not, you don't have permission. You can't use the songs. Go away. Whatever the reason. Um, and then I was approached, but I'd like to give a shot at this. And I thought, hmm, yeah, well, you know, whatever. You know, I know how to put a show together. So we, um, we, we, we interviewed, um, there were four songwriters. There was Carol and her husband, Jerry Goffin, her then-husband, Jerry Goffin, and Barry Mann and Cynthia Weil, who were the other songwriting team in the show. And I, I talked to all four of them about their how they felt about us doing the show and we'd be using their life and how do they feel and everything. And three of them wanted to see the show, but they all had, each of them had different total ideas. No one had the same idea. It would have been a mess what they wanted. Um, and the fourth one was Carol, who said, absolutely no. <laughs> so I went back to the man who suggested, who owns the songs, and I said, I told him the story, and he said, yeah, no, I know. Just, just go forward. You, you'll, you'll be fine. You, j just do it. So I said, really? He said, no, no, it's all right. Just, she'll be fine eventually. So we went ahead and we, we started developing it. Got a playwright, a wonderful man named Doug, Douglas McGrath, um, to start working on the script. And we started working on it. And we did a reading. And we did a um, matter of fact, the first reading of the show was at the Muni um, on a Saturday morning, um, one August morning. Many years ago, probably seven, eight years ago, um, I had the cast that was, going to, was doing the show that week. It did us a favor and just came to the room and did a cold reading so we could hear how Doug was doing. Um, and we did a reading then in New York for, 
prepared reading where people learned the songs, and we did it in front of about 50 people, and they just loved it. And I went, oh, maybe we're on to something. And this, but the other people, the other songwriters were totally against it. They said, oh, I'm not, because they all wanted the, the version they wanted when I first met them. And this was not what they'd wanted at all. Um, and then they talked Carolyn to come into the second reading. And she came and left at the intermission and never came back. <laughs> so we thought, well, we're dead, you know. Um, and I said to her daughter, um, duh. She said, I don't know my mother. I never know. You know, just keep going forward. So we did finish the reading and um, great success, except Carol wasn't there. Um, and the daughter went back to her that night and said, so you do want to kill it? What, what, what happened? And Carol said, you know, what I was seeing was so real to what happened to me in my life. She said, that, that was the section where her husband tells her he'd want, he wants to have an affair with another woman. She said, I lived through that. I don't want to live through it again <laughs> watching it. She said, so the daughter said, so should we kill the show? And Carol said, look, the writing was very good. That's why I responded that way. And the people who are doing it, who put it together, they know what they're doing. And that audience was loving it. She said, so I think what we should do is just turn the rights over to Paul Blake and let him get on with it um, and make the show. But don't ever ask me to publicize this. I don't do that. It's yours to do. Go do it. I trust you. So we went ahead and did it. And when we opened, Carol was nowhere in sight. And everyone thought, oh, this is something wrong. This is Carol. She, something's very wrong. And about four months in, she called us out of the blue one day and said, I'm ready to see it. And she came that night and surprised the cast on stage. And she fell in love with the show. And she's been, she's been our biggest fan ever since. Paul, tell me something about the, uh, the title song, Beautiful. I, I'm really not familiar with it. Was that written especially for the show, or was no, it one no of hers? No, I'm not familiar with it. It's on the Tapestry album. Nobody, it's not a song that took off on Tapestry. Tapestry, you know, has You Got a Friend, and has um, Too Late, and has Natural Woman, has some of the great songs she wrote. But it doesn't, and Beautiful's on that album. Um, but nobody knows it. And we couldn't think of a title for the show. I thought it should be called You Got a Friend. And everyone kept saying, that sounds like Sesame Street. So I went, all right. Um, and one day, the same day, the playwright and about an hour later, Carol, both called us and said, I know the title. And they both said, beautiful. I was amazed. And I thought, well, if both of them come up with the same title on the same day, I said, that's kind of, you know. And everyone kind of liked that. But I said, we got attached to it, the Carol King musical. Because beautiful means nothing to everybody. Beautiful means a million things to people. It doesn't mean our show. So I attached the Carol King musical to the title. Now it's become, it's so well known, the show, that when you say beautiful, people know you're talking about the Carol King musical. Let's listen but, to a little bit of that, uh, Paul. Okay. Uh, for folks who may still not be familiar with it, uh, give them a taste of it. You got to get up every morning With a smile on your face And show the world of love in your heart And people are gonna treat you better Frustration growing and they don't see it showing. Why do I 
Well, that's the title track from Beautiful, the Carol King musical. It was performed by the Broadway cast, and we are talking with Paul Blake, the lead producer and former executive producer of the Muni. He put all that together. The voice we just heard, by the way, was not Carol King. That was Jesse Mueller? Yeah, that's Jesse Mueller, who won the Tony Award um, as Carol King when we did the show, when she did the show. Yeah. Well, she sounds an awful lot like her. Yeah. How, how about So Far Away, which is one of my favorites? Uh, is there a story behind that, and how is that presented yeah, in the show? I wish I could help you on that one. I don't, I don't know the story. That, I, I believe that's Carol's lyrics, So Far Away. But it's a good song. Why don't you play it? It was love hearing, great hearing it. Let's do So far away Doesn't anybody stay in one place anymore It would be so fine to see your face in my door It doesn't help to know that you're just time away Long ago I reached for you So far away from the uh, show, beautiful. Uh, that's the Carol King story, of course, and that's Jesse Mueller, the uh, the young woman who plays uh, played Carol King on stage uh, singing there. That was not Carol King. We're talking with Paul Blake. That's one of my favorites, Paul. The lyrics he had a way. She had a way with words. There's no question about it. To this to this day, she, when she writes you notes, when she writes emails, you go, "This is." And she just knocks it off. No, she's a writer, too, as well as a songwriter, you know. She's terrific. Yeah, you pointed out when you were talking earlier about getting this whole thing started that one of the things that impressed her most about it was, was the words, the lyrics, the, 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 the narrative for the, uh, for the show. Yeah, well, the book writer, Doug McGrath, uh, just ne- found it. He figured, he figured out how to do it. You know, when we started, I, I said to Doug, here's the deal. You've got to treat these songs as songs, because that's how people know them. Do not try to treat them as dialogue the way you would in the Roger and Hammerstein show. You know, in the Roger and Hammerstein, you talk, and well, maybe I could, maybe I've been in love before. How'd you feel about me? Uh, well, you, I know if I loved you time and again, I, you're, you're into the song, you know. Um, these are song songs. So they have to be always, and he, oh, he found brilliant ways to place them in the show where they're always done as songs, but yet they also have an emotional resonance to the story that surrounds it. And it's, it's kind of uncanny. Um, it's, it's just a, a fabulous script Doug McGrath wrote for the show. A, a quick question about the rights. You mentioned that a couple of moments ago. She gave you the rights. I mean, you're performing her music every night and have been for five years. How does that work out? I mean, does ASCAP get into this? Do you have to pay royalties? I mean, she's making a lot of money is what I mean. Yeah, but I mean, how does, how no, does that work? Just, we're not just on Broadway, and we're not just touring America. Right. We are. We also play in England, and we play, we play Japan. Um, we, we, we're going to go back to England this year. We did Australia for a year. Um, and all the girls, everywhere we go, whoever plays Carol, she wins the award, the theater award that year. But again, I want to go back to the payment on these rights. Do you have to pay ASCAP or pay Carol King, or how does that work? No, um, not ASCAP. Um, you, you, we pay the, the, the songs, most of the songs, are owned by a company called Sony ATV. Ah. Um, you'll see in the show, if you notice there's a show, she's... She writes the songs for a man named Don Kirshner, who hires her to write the songs. And he owned the songs when, that they wrote. Now, she, as an owner of the song, as a publisher of the song he was, you get some of that royalty, and the other parts of it goes to the songwriters themselves. Uh-huh. Um, 
and that's how it's all broken down to this day. So we send the money to Sony because there's so many songs. The, the splits are not – it's not just apples and apples. They have a million different variations to them. Each song, I don't – I, 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 have, I don't even know specifically what they are. Um, I, we just send them a lump sum and go spread it around, make everybody happy. One other question as our time winds down, Paul Blake, is uh, how do you find these Carol Kings? <laughs> I mean, the, the young women who uh, play her on stage uh, are so good, but it must be very difficult finding well, the yeah, right we person. A casting director. We have a casting director, and we, we see dozens of young ladies it's um it's a big it's a big drama um we go through lots it's, it's not easy we go through many many people um to find because they have to be able to not only sing but also be able to act um and act and do with the comedy of it and also be the right age and look right and it's it's very it's 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 a lot but you find them you know you find them you know when i when i ran the muni which you know um i was there for 22 years um we'd find young people um, from from the great college programs in the country, and start them off into their life, and the kids we started at the Muni that 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 I had picked worked are now starring on Broadway, starring on Broadway, not just appearing, but playing leading roles on Broadway right now. Um, th- these wonderful people are out there. You just need to see a lot of people to find them, but they're there. I've read that you f- you feel that the Muni experience you had for those two decades was very, very helpful to you in getting this production underway. I'll tell you, had I not been at the Muni for 22 years, Beautiful would not be what it is. It, those, those years educated me so much about, because I only did, when I was at the Muni, I was very fortunate. I was, I was able to do only the great musicals. Um, and and there are enough of them to sort of be, to to do a rotation on them, and so l- watching the great Rodgers and Hammerstein work, or the Jerome Robbins work, or the Goward Champions work, or the George Abbott work, how they put those great musicals together, how they were structured, you start to notice. Wait a minute, it's 20 minutes in. Ooh, there's that big number. It starts to show up in every show. Oh, there it is now, 20 minutes. And so when we were doing this show, I said, with 20 minutes, now we got to do something. I said, we need something. This is our moment to do that moment. And I spoke to the playwright how to do it. And, and, we, and we, we structured it a lot around from things I'd learned all those years watching the great shows over and over and over as I had to at the Muni. Um, that you just learned, I learned how to do it. And that those years were invaluable to me. You know, um, we have to, we, we have to wind this down, but I, I would just like to point out that Carol King was very successful, but she made stars out of a lot of other people who sang her songs, didn't she? Oh, everybody's covered her songs. You know, everybody thinks Aretha Franklin wrote Natural Woman. Everyone thinks James Taylor wrote You Got a Friend. Um, in our show, they find out that's not the that's the Carol wrote those songs, but. Um, which is fine. You know, you write songs, you want great artists to sing your songs, not just yourself. Um, and Carol, they all sing Carol's songs. Yeah, no. And they're all in our show. Um, so I, I just hope that, you know, the people if, at the Fox Theater, they'll have a great time with Beautiful. I have no question about it. Well, no. They will d- walk out saying, I loved it. Well, that's always the case. And we're sure it'll be received that way once again here. Beautiful. The Carol King musical opens tonight at the Fox Theater and plays through Sunday. I was talking with Paul Blake, lead producer of the musical and the former executive producer of the Muni for 22 years. Let's go out with one of those songs that was a hit from someone else, not Carol King. How about Natural Woman? Aretha Franklin had a pretty good hit with that one. Looking out on the morning rain I used to feel uninspired And when I knew I'd have to face another day Lord, it made me feel so tired Before the day I met you Life was so unkind But your love was the key to my
Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com.